So what we're being told right now is that rent prices are actually coming down. And we talked about this before, we discussed it. This is a little bit of a loaded headline, basically. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. I appreciate you guys joining me yet again. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button. And I gotta tell you, I really do appreciate you guys because I put up a video this morning and uh, I was feeling some kind of way about it, but you guys really brighten my day and know how to make me feel a whole lot better about what I'm doing and what I'm trying to bring to you guys on these videos. Now, what I wanna talk to you guys about is the situation with rent. And this is going to be, like I said, a loaded headline. And also, hopefully it's not too windy. I got the wind diffuser on the microphone, but it is a definitely a much windier day today here in Florida. Uh, and uh, we're gonna talk about rent prices in Florida as well as in other states, mainly New York. We're gonna talk about uh, Pennsylvania as well in a few other areas because what's happening is happening everywhere it's happening everywhere so um this talk about rent prices coming down is subjective it depends on where you live it depends on where you live where you live for instance something flying in my mouth sorry about that for instance if you live in let's just say California and your, or I tell you what, let's just say you live in Georgia. Let's go with Georgia. So this way I can give you a more accurate representation of the different locales. So let's just say you live in Georgia and we're talking about, we're discussing rent prices. Well, living in Georgia and living in uh, Atlanta or living in Gainesville or living in, uh, let's just say, Sandy Springs or living in Covington or living in Carrollton or living in Macon or Warner Robins. All these areas are going to be different depending on where you live, where you live. And that's before we even get into the semantics of where you live, where you live, where you live, which is, yeah, I live in Georgia, technically in Atlanta, but in let's just say, uh, let's just say Brookhaven. <laughs> now we're getting real specific and the price is definitely, the price is definitely going up. But what's going on is crazy folks. They're saying rent prices are coming down. We all know what that really means. And in fact, according to statistics and you guys yourselves actually voting in the poll have confirmed that rent prices are either staying the same or increasing. In addition to food prices are staying the same or increasing. So we got a lot to discuss here. Uh, a continuation of a conversation, I think, for the foreseeable future about pricing, affordability, unaffordable housing, and rent, mortgage rates, income, the whole nine. We got a lot to talk about. But what's happening with the rent prices is that we're not seeing rent prices come down, not in any meaningful way that'll have a big enough impact on the mass majority in general, overwhelming percentage of society that would really, really appreciate a lower price in rent. Granted, I do believe, I do think, and I have actually seen an increase in rental inventory opportunity, which should theoretically drive down rent prices in certain areas. But what I really wanna to talk to you guys about right now is a completely different rental market. And this is something that's happening in major cities. Major cities that are seeing vacancy and empty office buildings as a result of companies like WeWork going out of business, going bankrupt, closing down 70, however many office buildings they have with however many millions of square feet that they have. This is creating a huge problem in a variety of ways for the cities, for the neighborhoods that they're in, for 
the tax revenue that they no longer produce, while also there being the ongoing challenge and continuous struggle of housing, particularly in places like New York City, where New York is extremely expensive to live. Most people can't even afford to live there. And now they're doing some crazy stuff where literally they're gonna be charging people thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a month to share a room in a building for roughly maybe 80 square feet, as long as it has a window, but that window doesn't actually look outside of the building. Crazy, I know, but this is, this is it. This is, the, uh, this is the evolution. This is the cycle. This is the change. This is how it's going to be switched up. And it's going to cost people a lot, of, a lot of money. And here's why. And it's not just New York, but here's why. Much like I think a lot of other real estate that we have right now, a lot of other real estate, is the fact that the land is, is scarce. Therefore, uh, we need to develop ways to extract the most amount of money possible out of the land. For instance, we talked about last, maybe, I gotta look back and see when we talked about this. But we talked about how mobile home communities were being bought up and people were being kicked out. They were forced to vacate. And why? Because the land was so valuable that there was no sense in anyone owning this land to only sit trailers on it. So instead, they would want to sell the land to recoup as much out of that as possible, make their money, turn their profit, and they sell it to a developer, they sell it to an investor, they sell it to a BlackRock, a State Street, a Jeff Bezos, who Jeff Bezos is actually about to buy up a shitload of real estate folks and it's gonna end up just like everything else. It's gonna end up like the banks, where 1% owns 99%, and once they have that, they're never gonna relinquish it, they're never gonna let go of it, and it's gonna be much harder for people like you and I to have a chance at, you know, getting a glimpse of wealth. Wealth, as they say. And, uh, I hope it's not too loud this way. I tell you what, I'm gonna go the other way. I don't want it to be too loud with the traffic going behind me. But either way, what they're gonna do is they're gonna buy this land and they're gonna take these trailers, they're gonna kick these people out and they're gonna build up. Instead of having a, a, a lot with a trailer on it, they'll have the ability to have a lot that could have a multifamily unit on it. They'll have a lot that can have a townhouse on it. They'll have a lot that can go up vertical as high as the permitting process in the city will allow them to maximize the, their, their return. And then what they would charge that one mobile home for that one lot, they'll charge more for each person on each floor of that one lot. Multiplying and maximizing their return on their investment. And this is a forced situation by the Fed, by the current economy, by uh, monetary policy, by a variety of different factors forcing this to happen because of how expensive everything is, because of inflation, because of the problems we face as a country, as the entire world, really, this has become a global pandemic. And essentially, in order for these developers to get their money out, in order for them to afford the inflated costs and prices of developing, building, construction, wages, insurance, the whole nine, property taxes, the borrowing costs for the money from the banks for these construction loans, everything costs so much more well they are going to then pass that along to whoever is going to potentially buy and or rent and this cycle is going to continue on 
and on and on. And we are going to be tricked into these loaded headlines of rent prices are falling, rent prices are dropping, when you and I both know that that is entirely untrue and nothing could be further from the truth uh, and that is entirely not the case. So New York City, number one on the list, number one uh, empire state. Um, <laughs> their rent is already sky high and it's only going to get higher. And this trend of repurposing abandoned office buildings makes sense in theory, but it's a very, very expensive endeavor. And they are not going to do this for the greater good of the people who really could use affordable housing. And it will then become more of a manipulative monopoly uh, and a pl playing games with the numbers, with uh, the, taxes, the tax incentives, with uh, the grants, with whatever could be dangled, whatever carrot could be dangled in front of them by the New York City mayor, as long as he is mayor, and until he resigns. And then whoever takes over after that, who knows what their plan may be. But this is not in any meaningful way a, a true attempt at providing affordable housing for the people who need it. Not when you're charging two, three, four, five, six, maybe even $8,000 a month in rent for a glorified closet, basically. But <sighs> unlike Vegas, where they say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, well, what happens in New York <laughs> happens everywhere else. <laughs> and it's happening here too. It happens here in Florida and it's happening all around. And here's why. Uh, if you watched my video yesterday with Grant Cardone, then you'll know more about what I'm talking about because we touched on it in that video. And essentially what's happening is we're having an increase and, uh, huh, we got some uh, ambulance activity over here. I saw the police when I walked by. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know what happened, but I hope everything's okay. I don't know what happened, but I hope everything's okay. <sighs> Man, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. But hey, the deal is, is that Grant Cardone, he said it himself, and, and I, I agree with this. And it's that uh, the luxury rental, the luxury apartment rental living situation is growing. It's growing in popularity. And it's an evolution, okay? Much like I told you guys before in other videos, I'm seeing a lot of YouTubers, a lot of channels dying. I'm seeing a lot of folks quit. I'm seeing a lot of folks give up because the landscape has changed. The market has changed. Everything has changed. So essentially, um, that is exactly what just happened or is happening with uh, WeWork. So we work changed. The whole concept of working, uh, shared workspace, office, all of that changed as a result of literally our entire lives changing for the most part with the pandemic, with C-19, with everything that happened that just turned the whole world upside down. And now we are working on some form of recovery to get back to normal. But the new normal isn't going to be anything like the old normal. But if you, yourself, personally, your business, your company, who you work for, who you rely on for your income, whatever it may be, isn't paying attention and isn't actively working to adapt to, to 
continue to stay viable in this new market, in this new economy, then you could end up like we work. But it's just a natural progression. It's a natural evolution. Uh, the strongest will survive. And right now, working remotely, working from home and limited office space and cutting overhead and real estate expenses, just like Elon Musk did with Twitter, just like Facebook did over in, in Europe, it's gonna happen, okay? Now, from that, there's an opportunity for folks to jump into the real estate game, picking up property, whether it be single family or commercial or both, mixed use, family, uh, multifamily mixed use, and then picking this up from institutional sellers and then saving money on that at a discount, it's gonna be a distressed sale, and then converting that into a much more profitable business venture and riding that out until the next, the next dip, until the next evolution that we begin to witness and realize. So with that, and you add on what I talked about earlier with the rise in uh, developer costs and wanting to maximize on profits, ultimately to cover their expenses by way of the changes that we have seen in the economy and just the increase in price of everything, 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 food, energy, uh, housing, transportation, healthcare, insurance, it's all going up, it's crazy high. This luxury apartment, luxury lifestyle, luxury rental, uh, amazing amenity offering is only going to continue to grow in popularity, which is only going to continue to drive up rent prices, <laughs> okay? And we're not even getting into what the folks in New York are dealing with because they're not getting luxury, okay? They're just getting a place to stay, fortunately made available by some changes by a New York City mayor that will allow them to convert office space, commercial office space into potential living space. And again, all they gotta do is add an interior window and boom, voila. You now have a possible apartment that someone can live in and pay you thousands of dollars a month, uh, pay you what some would pay in other states in mortgages for you know, over 5,000 square feet of a home, three car garage, a basement, maybe a pool, uh, a nice yard. They're gonna pay you in New York just to rent a closet, basically, and have a shared bathroom and a shared kitchen. Crazy when you think about it, wild when you think about it. But this uh, is par for the course, folks. The, uh, the, 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 the loaded headline of rent prices dropping, if you read the fine print, rent prices dropped 2.1% year over year for the month of November in select areas. However, rent prices are still up over 20% since 2019. Not to mention, uh, rent prices have increased in certain areas month, year over year for the month of November, depending, okay? And like I said, what happens in New York ends up traveling and permeating throughout the rest of the country, and we are going to see more converted space more con converted space as, again, the land is finite, the land is scarce, they're not making any more of it. So whatever land you can get and you can take that you can then convert to be worth more for the owner or the investor, primarily the developer, the developer who's looking to get as much money out of this deal as possible is going to then produce much more expensive living conditions, rental, apartment, uh, mixed use neighborhoods. I've even seen DR Horton building neighborhoods from scratch with the sole purpose of only renting them out. So you will rent, you will own nothing and be happy, or at least you'll own nothing and be, because I don't know how happy you could be renting an apartment for 80 square feet in New York for $6,000 a month. I don't see, I don't see how happiness can exist there, but hey, Maybe they know something that I don't know, but that's just how I feel about the situation. Uh, but down here in Florida, I'm seeing it. 
Uh, Michelle, actually, she just told me, she goes, you know, they're building a uh, Top Golf over in Panama City Beach. And I think that that is a clear sign and indication that, you know, they want to bring in the amenities to entice the people, not just for, it's not so much, I don't think it's so much for recreational and vacation travel. I think this is for year round, uh, year round ways to incentivize year round. And that'll be an added amenity. So for instance, oh, there's an apartment complex. You can come rent an apartment. It'll cost you $35,000, $4,000 a month. And you get a nice pool, you get a gym, you get some other features, and there's a top golf in walking distance. So uh, this is it, folks. This is, this, is the, this is how things are changing. This is how things are being uh, manipulated. This is how we're going to see the evolution of the wealth transfer wealth transfer and we're probably about to see an uh, uh, a turning point where some folks are going to lose their ass big time on real estate uh, especially commercial real estate banks are going to take a huge hit developers are about to continue to make money hand over fist for them the interest rates won't really matter so long as they can get some folks in there uh, get some heads in the beds basically but then you'll also have them being motivated and incentivized by some of these cities to create this housing that will then be supplemented by taxpayer dollars to put unhoused people in these new developments. Crazy stuff, folks. Wild and crazy. And I got to say that the craziest part about it is, is that literally, as long as they put an interior window inside the unit, they can consider it a bedroom, even if that window doesn't face the outside of the building. Thank you guys for watching. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment. See you guys on the next one. I can tell you my problems, meditating my silence. But I keep pushing my pen, rotating my stylus. Brokenness feeling like seeing, not no breath, low dollar. Used to be left on red, now all the girls go holler. Now all the girls go follow. All the fake friends go pop.